Good morning, good morning, good morning everyone. Welcome, Welcome to the OpenShift Open coffee, coffee break show. show. And I will, I will make sure that I will stop, stop any echo. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, Welcome back to the OpenShift Open coffee, coffee break show here, show here at OpenShift Open TV. TV. Sure. I'm Roberto Carandala. I'm based in Madrid and I'm part of the EMEA Specialist Solution Architects focusing in OpenShift and also in ACS. Yeah, uh, I'm Rodrigo Alvarez. Hello, hello there. Uh, I'm based in Dubai, and now it's 41 degrees. So, yes, as you can imagine, it's freaking hot. And I'm part of the same team as as Roberto. So, yeah, today here to to talk about DevSecOps and ACS. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's based in Stackbox that we acquired a couple of months ago. And uh, we now have the operator. You know, we're celebrating, we're celebrating uh, the GA of the, the uh, ACS, ACS operator. operator. Uh, uh, but we would like, like to celebrate it with a live demo. With this is, uh, is a kind, which is kind of, of also, also uh, uh, SSA, SSA way, way read that way, you know, the new things. Uh, always, uh, always live. live. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, that, uh, is that is very cool. cool. Um, um, so, what, so what we have, we this, have this agenda. agenda. Uh, I think uh, uh, Roberto, Roberto and Rodrigo is going to show this uh, demo, demo about, about uh, DevSecOps pipeline. pipeline. So would you, would like, you like Roberto, Roberto to, introduce to introduce the concept? The concept? I don't know if you have any uh, uh, thing, thing, diagram, diagram to share. To to share to yeah, I have a, a couple of slides talking about DevSecOps in Hybrid Cloud with uh, Red Hat and also why DevSecOps is important and uh, why this uh, ACS and the integrations uh, with other uh, very nice products like uh, OpenShift GitOps, OpenShift Pipelines, and so on. And we can uh, go through the, the demo. Um, I will share my screen if uh, everything goes well. I don't know if you can see it, my screen. Yes, yes, I can. Yeah. Okay, yep. perfect. So I will present us. And we can uh, speak about the Dexic option in Hybrid Cloud with Red Hat. And my, fir my first question is uh, what we need to answer is why Dexic option is important? Why uh, can this affect my business and, and my applications? So Dexic option allows IT and security teams to tackle challenges across people, processes, and technologies and allows um, improving, for example, speed and efficiency or just consistency, making things um, repetitively and uh, improving also uh, collaboration. And the thing is that security can no longer be only the concern of uh, the only security teams and needs to be included in early conversations, for example, uh, with the development and the DevOps teams, among others. So security team needs to be part of this conversation in our DevOps team earlier. And also having the possibility to add security in the different process of development, deployment and runtime of our workloads and our business. And on the other hand, um, DevOps and SRE needs to have these uh, appropriate tools that help the security management in the task. So it needs to have a very nice tools in order to improve the different layers of security in our pipelines and our, our processes as well. The thing is that in most organizations focus only in the application itself, in the application pipeline, but also it's important sometimes to add security process across the entire life cycle using, for example, uh, DexeCorps, adding integrity um, of the libraries used, called the scanning, we will um, show in the live demo the whole uh, life cycle using also uh, security steps in this DexeCops file. And also other um, possibilities that we can discuss about. And we, not, we need to um, think that security must be continuous and holistic. So DexeCops allows you to approach this security continuously and holistically across the application and infrastructure lifecycle, divided, divided in um, different phases, like for example, build, run, manage, adapt. But we need to think that this needs to uh, be a continuous uh, walkthrough. 
And why Red Hat for DevOps? How can Red Hat help in the uh, DexecOps? Red Hat OpenShift platform have a vision to have a hybrid cloud platform for enterprises to build, deploy, and run application in, in securely at a scale. So for example, Red Hat delivers continuous security for containers and Kubernetes with OpenShift uh, platform using, for example, and providing trusted content, having this life cycle of the, the platform, using also a strong role-based access control, uh, having a network isolation and container isolations and so on. And ACS, and this is the good part, extends the security also to application layer. For example, adds vulnerability analysis or the configuration app analysis, and also for, for, for example, using compliance assessment or risk profiling, or even in the runtime, checking if there is any uh, threats and uh, making the incident response as well. So ACS, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Security for Kubernetes, have and focus in three different parts. The secure supply chain, giving tools to the different developers in order to have more uh, integration and have more uh, tools in order to, for example, uh, integrate and scan in the different pipelines. Also have the possibility to secure the infrastructure, giving the security post management to, for example, identify, identify if there is any threats or just uh, remediate uh, any uh, wrong configuration, something like that. And on the other hand, also in the random, and this is very, very important to secure the workload, to maintain this thorough trust execution and do this workload protection as well. And we need to remember that Red Hat Advanced Cluster Security for Kubernetes ACS is the first Kubernetes native security platform. So it's the first and it's built for Kubernetes and running in Kubernetes. And for this reason, have a very nice uh, integrations, for example, using the image scanning that it's uh, in the industry, like Claire, uh, Tenable, uh, the own uncle, also the integrations with different registries, um, the registries in SAS or itself with Quayo or other registries with Hub or something like that. Also the integration with CSCD. In this demo, we will show how well integrates ACS with OpenShift pipelines, but could be also integrated with other CACD tools. And obviously you need to know what's going on in your platform. So you can connect uh, with DevOps notification and we can see also um, the Slack uh, connection or the Microsoft Teams um, from some alerts that you can notify if anything goes wrong or something like that. And also the Scion, for example, to bring these uh, different logs or different activities and um, bring these different uh, log systems and activity threats to an Splunk or a Sumologic or also interact with another such tools like AWS Security Hub. So the first thing is that with all of that, we can secure the containers and shift the security left. What's this? What's this uh, security, um, shift security left? It's trying to give the different developers and the different teams tools in order to bring the security in the uh, early stages. For example, when the developer is trying to build the, the code, giving them tools in order to identify with their pipelines if there is any vulnerability or if there is anything that goes wrong the, with the configuration. And answering also securing the Kubernetes platform, having, for example, a strong um, admission uh, and, and checking, for example, that mm, no privileged pods can, can run. Also, if there is uh, any uh, critical vulnerabilities in the pod, I won't uh, allow to deploy these pods. And also having this compliance and risk assessment in the different uh, platforms and the different Kubernetes and OpenShift clusters that we uh, manage with ACS. And finally, 
securing the container runtime because this is very, very important. How we can secure our workloads, how we can um, try to, when we are running our applications, detect if there is anything wrong, if there is any attack, and try to isolate the, this attack in order to uh, having, for example, micro segmentation with network policies or very strict, um, very strict, for example, um, policies in order to not running some crypto miners or um, anomalous behavior. And if there is any threat, we can kill uh, and enforce the, the port that um, offends and uh, files the, the violation itself. And the pipeline, uh, we want to also show in uh, the demo the um, integration with ACS and also other open source tools that uh, we bring. And um, this is more or less the um, CACD pipeline using also and introducing also security steps, not only focusing in build and deploy our uh, source code and building the images and deploying on OpenShift, also having, for example, unit test um, code analysis, security scanning for detecting the vulnerabilities and so on. This is very, very important in order to bring and uh, add more steps of security to our um, DevOps pipeline itself. Right. And uh, our demo of the XECOPS pipeline, um, it's more or less with that. We will um, bring together the three things that from my perspective are awesome, that are OpenShift pipelines based in Tecton. On the other hand, OpenShift GitOps as well, based in Argo City, and ACS as well, with uh, advanced cluster security for Kubernetes. Also, we will use another tools like a Git server with based in Gox, um, Unit, Sonacube, Nexus, Subproxy, and Gatlin. All of them are open source, and you can build your um, DevOps pipeline very easily, adding more and more to the scenario. So what do you think, guys? We can check the uh, pipelines if we wanted to. Go for it. I, I think it's- Yeah, go, uh, go ahead. And awesome. just to, it's nice to, to say as well, basically that today's demo is gonna be focused on end-to-end uh from the developer point of view to the uh delivering the application itself uh and we will not focus basically on just on acs okay just it's going to be like the entire life cycle mm -hmm. so think that you are a developer and you want to deploy your pipeline and introduce and also integrate with acs the first thing that we need to know it's what's Mm, what we can uh, do to install uh, our different uh, components. For example, I install, I already install OpenShift GitOps that brings Argo CD into our scenario and we can uh, use GitOps uh, in a very nice way to uh, the continuous deployment. Also, Red Hat OpenShift pipelines that it's based in Tecton and we will use this Tecton pipelines and uh, OpenShift uh, pipelines itself based in, in Tecton and also this guy that is the advanced cluster security that this is the operator that when GA on I think in the Friday or on Saturday the good thing is that uh, with this operator it's a very nice way to install it you have also other possibilities to install uh, ACS that in the past you can have the possibility to install it with the gem itself or using helm charts but this is a very nice way and the most imp impressive uh, thing is that you have also the channels and you have the uh, this approval that it's automatic so when a new acs release uh, pops up you can automatically have and upgrade your entire uh, acs cluster without doing anything so it's very awesome. Also, we can check, for example, if we go to the stack rocks itself, we can check the uh, central and we deploy it using the create central. So central, it's, 
Imagine that central is the brain of ACS, and it's everything that uh, needs to have and uh, needs to analyze. It's uh, going to uh, the central, so you can install it in a very nice way, just um, deploying the the central, and afterwards the uh, security uh, manage uh, of the different uh, clusters. So first of all, you deploy the central, and afterwards you uh, deploy the managed um, se uh, security and the different um, components like the sensor and so on that we can explain nowadays. But this is the first uh, thing that you can do after you install the ACS operator. So for example, you have in here that you can control the admin password, also the exposure, and you can expose like um, OpenShift root that I did in, in this demo but also you can have the possibility to uh, explore other possibilities uh, with load balancer or node pods, something like that. Also use your own um, certificates. Or uh, for example, if you want to uh, have your um, scanner or not uh, of base in, in the stack box, imagine that you are using the QAIO scanner and you don't need it. So you can disable it as well. And also the good thing is that you can install ACS in a fully disconnected way. So in this case, you can control if your uh, ACS connects to the internet or not, deploying your operator and deploying your cluster fully private. So it's very, very easy. And we install it like this way. And after that install it, we have and I will go to the developer view. And in the developer view, we have the different pieces. Did it the central, that is the brain, and also the scanner and the scanner DB. That is the scanner and the vulnerability scanner, like Huayo, but from Stackbox, from ACS. And also the different pieces that uh, are from uh, specifically um, manage uh, cluster. So when you want to manage one cluster, automatically you can deploy from the operator and the different uh, pieces that connects to the central. In this case, the mission control. The Um, cluster like the Kubernetes and OpenShift 4 very, uh, in a very easy way using this directly or using also the own operator. So in the own operator, you can see, for example, let me go again to this. You can check also the secure clusters and you can add the secure clusters whatever you want. For example, you need to connect to the central endpoint and so on. And we have also installed OpenShift GitOps, OpenShift Pipelines, and ACS. That are the three building blocks that we have in here. But also, we need to check other things that are very good stuff for our um, developer uh, DexecOps pipeline. In this case, we have different things like Cox servers, the trigger, and so on that we can explore when we launch. The first thing that we need to do is simulate that we are a developer. We are a developer that wants to launch our um, pipeline. So what's the first thing that we need to do? Go to our Git server. This Git server is um, based in Gox, but you can use whatever you want. So for example, in this case, we have the source code, that this is the Sprint Pet Clinic, a very nice sp uh, Spring uh, Boot application. Yeah, that, and, there is a popular Spring Boot app. Yeah, that's right, sir. All right. And we have in here, we have our repo, and also we have also the other repo. This repo represents and have the GitOps way. So we will have the deployment use, the customization, the root, and the service. 
and everything that we need in order to have it. Nice. Uh, also, sorry, there, there was a yeah. um, there, in the while. Sorry to interrupt. There, there is a question in the chat uh, yeah. because you mentioned it. So, uh, Alos Dag is, is asking, what's the difference between Queo Scanner and the one included in Stackrooks? Are they complementary in some way? They are based and they are scanning amongst different vulnerabilities and different CVEs. So you will receive. Um, the different, for example, approaches for, but, but basically it's uh, more or less the same. It's scanning the image for different vulnerabilities uh, going through different sources. So it could be that uh, have um, slightly difference between the uh, scanning one image and another using Stackrocks scanner and Quayayo, but basically do the same, uh, the same thing, that it's scan your image in order to check for vulnerabilities. Yeah. And also, it's it's nice to highlight that you can integrate ACS with Glare, for example. So basically, you have that 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 capability of integrating. Uh, yeah. So can you can you show that? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, so nice. you can integrate with Glare. You can basically integrate with Red Hat Play IO. Okay. So it's quite uh, it's simple to to integrate. So you don't need to just rely on the Stackbox scanner. So you can basically integrate with existing ones. Yeah, this is very nice because you can Awesome. My pleasure. Uh, also, uh, we have in here the different uh, deployment, for example, and we have um, the deployment and so on that we will use in a very GitOps way. So we have our Argo CD in here and our Argo CD, the thing it's uh, doing it, please open it. Yeah, it's uh, having the Dex uh, Spring Pet Clinic and this is in the environment that have in Dev and states using the customization to uh, bring the GitOps and also syncing the different things. But in this case, it's syncing everything, but not the deploy because we are not building our image and the image is not available. So we need to, first of all, introduce a change. Where will we uh, introduce a change? In the pet clinic. So in the pet clinic, we will introduce a change, for example, if we log in, or if we want to introduce a um, change in the readme, like for example, I will reproduce demo time. And in this demo time, we will introduce that. And there is a, we uh, a webhook, and this webhook triggers our pipeline. This pipeline goes through the different steps. In this case, we will source and clone the different um, uh, code that is in here for our application also will go through the different code analysis, unit testing, and dependency report. So we can check that effectively it's cloning our application itself. And afterwards, in parallel for saving time, we will run, first of all, the code analysis based in Sona Cube. So we have also our Sona Cube, also our dependency reports for know the different dependencies that have our um, Spring application, and also the unit test. That is the unit test based in JUnit. So in the details, you can see the different things that are going through. And after that, we can check because we have uh, this um, code analysis and dependencies uh, reports in a very nice way to show the developers. So we are introducing the static analysis of our code, providing tools to our uh, developers also to uh, having, for example, before the, than building the image and building the uh, artifact, we are giving them the possibility to 
give us us, so a static analysis of our code, also the unit test as well, and um, seeing the dependencies reports for, for example, checking if there is anything wrong or not. This can be checked also when it's built, the dependency uh, reports, in a um, Repos, uh, in, in an Nginx server that it's called a uh, repo, uh, repo that I've used. Because we rely on the different parallel things and this spins up different pods. And the nice way that it's going with OpenShift pipelines is that you can parallelize and you can bring the different automation and Kubernetes native um, pipelines to do that. For example, uh, you can have also the exact same pipeline using Jenkins, but you need to rely with, in a central uh, Jenkins server, and in a, a very nice way, Tecton is doing that. So nice. when it is finished, that it's um, launching the different um, unit tests, we will have our result that it's uh, going through, takes like 30 seconds more. But the thing that I want to show, it's nice. We have the build success and we run a lot of tests for the test and everything is okay and afterwards we are using nexus for our uh, two things this nexus will have first of all for once we build uh, our um, jar our artifact we will push directly to the nexus for what reason because we want to control where it's located the different jars but also we will use um, Nexus as the Maven thing. But meanwhile, we can check the different Sonacube results. So if we go to the Sonacube, we can check the different projects. And in this case, we have a pet clinic itself. So we can check the code that have, and we can check also the vulnerabilities. So this is important also to show and to have um, the proper tools to the different developers. Because in this way, you can give them the possibility to check the different analysis uh, of their own code. Also, in the Nexus that we showed, I will close some tabs because if not, my computer will go. Okay, in here, mm -hmm. after this releasing of this app, um, yeah, this releasing of this app, this will push directly to the Nexus. So we will using Nexus for building our proper job. And if we go to the snapshot itself, we can see in here that effectively we have our job in here with our artifact ID and the version that we built. So once we have in here, and the developer knows that their code is okay, or at least um, have an static analysis of the different um, phases, and also have the dependency reports and the unit test, we can build the image. We build the image based in uh, Java 11, but we know that this is a trusted source. For what reason? Because we know that this went from the registry.redhat.io that it's a secure um, registry and also we are using this because we know that um, these images have a specific analysis and uh, more information about that. Once we have this information we need to use also as a maven mirror so we will use the nexus as uh, our, uh, and we will build our, uh, our image using the dependencies from the Maven public. And why this? Because we want to ensure also 
where are the different and where are Those three are awesome. These three pieces that runs in parallel are the integrations from our OpenShift pipelines to ACS. So we are, and we will integrate, and we will run an image scan using ACS registry. And afterwards, we will analyze the different vulnerabilities and check if there is OK or not. This stuff here, be right back. Okay, now should be good. I'm sorry about this uh, little issue, technical issue we have. And uh, now it should uh, everything should be fine. We have some uh, issue on the on the OBS side that we are using for for streaming. And uh, Roberto, yeah, I think we we just lost the one one step. Yeah, okay. the, the the image scan, but uh, for the yeah, the image issue. scan. This is the uh, the interesting one because we are um, using this uh, OpenShift pipeline and using the Rock CTL. Rock CTL is a command line tool for integrating in every CI CT tool um, and going also. For example, in this case, we are scanning the application that we, uh, the image that we built. And also we, after that um, application build, we can see directly a very nice report of our own image that uh, we already checked. So we have in here a lot of information and a lot of those things of uh, the different um, information that we have of our application. So you can check in here that it's SprintPet Clinic with the shell, and we have the different CVEs that we, uh, we can get more information. For, for example, we have these CVEs and so on. This is good stuff, but also we can check different things among the uh, image that we already built. For, for example, we don't want to anyone uh, have the package manager in the image. And for this reason, this system policy failed because detect that in one layer of the image that we already built have NPM or YAM. Or uh, on the other hand, for example, have vulnerabilities that could be fixable with modern scoring of seven. So these vulnerabilities are defined in ACS and are fully um, I fully managed. And on the other hand, we can check this. This is uh, from build. And we can stop our build. Imagine that you don't want to, uh, in any way, to build your image. So you can enforce this guy in order to, if there is any CVE detected in your image build, stop and fail the build. So you can prevent your developers to um, bring applications or bring uh, or build different uh, images containing CVEs or containing the different things that you don't want to. Imagine that you are detecting a, social, a cell shock or a health bleed uh, in your image. You need to prevent to deploy this image. And also in the deployment check, you can check not only in build, also you can check and, uh, the deployment of your own application. In this case, we are checking the different um, deployment of Kubernetes. In this case, we are checking amongst the different system policies, the different Kubernetes checks. In this case, for example, we can check what are the system policies. The system policies of ACS divided in three uh, layers, in build, in deploy, or in runtime. For example, the thing that we noticed before, I, as a security team, don't want that my developers build 
any uh, image that have CVEs with scoring more than seven. So we can check and we can enforce that. And we can just, for example, uh, give them a heads up in order to, guys, you are building images that have uh, this type of CVs. Please solve them. Because if not, could be uh, introducing some risks. But on the other way, you can also have the possibility to enforce. Why is enforced? So you can have the possibility to kill the uh, pipeline itself. So when you are building the pipeline, if you are not complying with my policy, this checks and fails the build and um, prevents that anyone builds the image or just deploys the image. So in this case, Starcrox ACS will fail when the image match the condition. And if we rerun this, we will see, meanwhile, I will rerun this, start that run. You can see that effectively will fail the pipeline. But if we go to the pipeline, the last pipeline, also we can check other things because the magic of GitOps happened. And why the magic uh, GitOps happened? Because we have in here one step that it's update deployment. We automatically in this pipeline and in the Gox server, we pushed and we changed the image one specific shell. So now the image is pointing with DDD4. This is the image built in our process. The image that went through the different stages of security as well. So it's good stuff because automatically you are pushing and you are changing the code without manual intervention. And this will notice and will spin up the different Argo CD application. And if you go to Argo, now we have in here have a very nice deployment that it's already live. And in this deployment, if you check the pod itself, the pod have the DDD4, the DDD5, that it's the exact same application that we already built. But the everything that it's okay. So if we go, for example, in um, to our application and to the, our namespace, we will see, let me handle this in the lexicops. Yeah. And we have in here our sprint pet, uh, pet cleaning application that we built in a very secure way. And also in the topology, and also in the pipeline, we introduce two steps more. That is the performance test. And this performance test, we are using Gatling. This Gatling, it's using and it's trying to uh, load a lot of requests to our application. It's like a loading test. And it's producing in a very nice way that we can check in the reports. So we have these reports in here. And if we pick the reports, we can check our application here. And if we check this, we can check, first of all, the different dependencies. And we can check the dependencies that we built already in the first place. But also, we can check the Gatling, that is different requests that we try to reproduce in order to know if our application is okay or not. And afterwards, finally, append testing. Append testing for what? Because when we have already built our application, we need to check from outside, simulating different attacks and trying to pen test our application in order to know, for, for, for example, if the hairblade vulnerability, it's uh, okay or not, 
or if we are using um, any weak authentication method or anything else, retrieving more information. Returning to um, the pipeline itself, we can see, ah, let me rerun that because sometimes file. We can see the different um, system policies and the different topology. I will shut down this. The good thing is that in the system policies, also the system policies, we can integrate information with different notifiers. In this case, I um, used Slack. So I uh, used and I integrated ACS with Slack in a very um, easy way. And now that we have in here, we can check for example, if anything happens during the build. For example, I can check if uh, one uh, application or if one um, build is against the different uh, system policies. For example, in this case, I'm checking that this specific uh, build of this uh, container have not the specified request or limits. So the good thing is every system policy, every policy that we already deploy, we can integrate into our systems. In this case, for example, it's very easy because we can integrate this policy automatically enabling notification with a Slack. But they are already different. Like for example, you can if the uh, build fails, open a Jira ticket or just nice. um, integrating with Splunk for seeing the different violations uh, or just integrated with Microsoft Teams as well, generating a channel. So this is a very nice way to try to get the information that for your team and for you matters in order to not receive 1,000 uh, notification uh, at a second. Only the notifications, uh, only the uh, things that for you already matters in a very nice way. For example, you have in here and they are already detected that in the deployment, your application have, for example, the um, different things that includes and could include the NFN, the, the DNF or LPM or YAM and also give you the remediation. And this is very nice because oh, you can cool. give the developer the different tools and the different um, information in order to, hey, Mr. Developer, you are building something that are not okay, that, that are not um, complying with my uh, different policies that we already defined. Good that is super or... cool. It's a compliance system where you can keep everything uh, in pace uh, mm -hmm. with, with the, your definition, system policies, integration. Right. I imagine uh, one cool integration is going to be the ticketing system, no? Yeah. Uh, for enabling your process. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Very cool. Yes, yeah. and uh, to, to be honest, I think I think when it comes to like uh, you know educating the developers to think more in a security point of view, they're going to start thinking about like the base image, right? So they need to be aware. They need to start asking questions like, "Is my base image updated? So what type of tools are uh, existing in that image? So do I have core or do I have wget? So you don't need wget on those images, right? So how many vulnerabilities exist within that image? So uh, the, the ACS allows the developers to be aware exactly what type of like, uh, you know, problems they can have in production because you don't want to basically ship any, you don't want to introduce new, new problems uh, in, in your production environment, right? So ACS allows you to educate your developers like even before having problems in the, during the build phase. Yeah. And also preventing, for example, and enforcing. Imagine that you in production don't want anything that uh, can be built with this EVE or with the RPM or just uh, not using requests or, or limits. You can prevent that. You can check that your own deployment, 
the, the, your own uh, name of Dexecops can have also the information about uh, you don't have this request or limit and also the rationale for what and the remediation as well giving this information directly to the developer and shifting left and adding more security layers and more information and more power to developers to solve the problems not only for the security teams to be uh, sticking around and giving the heads up every time to the, the, the different uh, development teams did it very very good and also you can enforce so you can prevent uh, that if this checks um, in, into the uh, development team um, if this fails you can prevent uh, to deploy the, the different application or to fail uh, the CI uh, itself so if we see that it's uh, building the image so in a couple of minutes we can see that effectively this when reach the image check fails one uh, specific um, system policy that we define it specific with CVSS because we define it in here and we enforce so in this enforcement if this um, policy don't mm, pass fail this policy against uh, our image because our image checked and we noticed that we have any cve that goes more than uh, seven on in the scope will fail automatically the ci and will prevent anybody to uh, cool. this is during the build phase right so if you want to protect like production you should uh, you know set on the deploy as well so that's gonna basically block any creation of the deployment with that that like uh, pr problematic image mm -hmm. we, we have a question from the chat there's uh, yeah. M Vats asking uh, can you create the custom violations is there any yeah. integration with open policy agent this is a very quick question uh, you can define it wherever you want, and it's very, very, very easy to define new policies, to define the severity, and also the life uh, cycle state. For example, you don't want to prevent, you want to prevent to a specific CVE to pops up. So you can uh, prevent in the deployment, um, goes to the description, and after that, for example, you can restrict and also enable the notification. With that, you can define whatever you want. In this case, for example, with a lot of things that affects in build, in deploy, and in a runtime. Imagine that you want to, um, you don't want to have the possibility to the developers to uh, deploy one image that have a CVE. So you can define the specific CVE in this case, for example, um, whatever you want. In this case, we can use the example CVE that it's called um, one one. Sorry, two eight. Well, the, the the nice thing as you can see here, so it's very user friendly. So yeah, uh, it's basically drag and drop. Yeah, basically you can build your policy criteria based on on drag and drop. So yeah, and you can, for example. Um, prevent uh, that anyone um, deploys a privileged container, uh, adding uh, certain capabilities. For example, I can define it that no one can deploy one uh, pod or one deployment with a certain capabilities, and I don't want uh, to allow it, or at least uh, just in, for, in, in format. And when we have it here, we can define it, the enforcement. So if this, if anyone tries to uh, in production on in whatever you want to deploy in specific uh, deployment with a pod with a certain capability or with a certain CVE, we can prevent and automatically ACS through an admission controller, the policy admission controller will fail. That it's more or less the, th the same thing that it's uh, having with OPA, but in a very, very nicer way. Because with here, you can drag and drop as perfectly said, uh, Rodrigo. And we can, for example, define a lot of uh, situations like SEPCOM, privileged containers, and so on. It's a very nice way to define it and to control your different policies. So 
you can define your own policies. And uh, at this stage, I don't think there is any integration with OPA no. and ACS. Mm -hmm. I, th I think Absolutely. it's going to be something similar to ACM, right? Mm -hmm. This uh, uh, checking with the PMs and in the future, we'll have uh, different things. So, okay. okay. And uh, finally, we have in here that effectively, we defined the image check. So the image check, we have a violated policy because this have an enforcement. So if we have it, and if we check the fixable CS, uh, CVSS, we see that we have this for, uh, policy enforcement that caused the failure of the whole um, CICD pipeline automatically because doesn't feel and uh, doesn't uh, pass our uh, compliance because I don't want to anyone put any CVE uh, building my, my image. And also right. you have more information because in the image check, the developer ha can have the possibility to check, okay, this image fails, but for what reason? I need to have more information. That's I need nice. to check. So we can bring this, we can bring this, uh, uh, this CVE and automatically know to which components are affecting, to which deployments are affecting as well, and also having more information, going directly to the information source. And this is a very nice way to do it. So you can control in a very nice way the different things that you have, giving the possibility and giving to the developers more tools in order to control in the full pipeline, even having the possibility to full control the uh, pipelines of your um, developers and enforce your compliance security policies. And that's, that's all for our uh, side. Wow, uh, all, I mean, it was super, uh, lots of uh, stuff. I think, you know what, I think this reserve also a second session where we yeah. go into more details. We had some, uh, I'm sorry for our attendees, we had a little issue on the streaming, so the stream gets split in two, um, but uh, we will make sure to, uh, uh, to, to join the two recording. Uh, so sorry about that, but uh, we were able today to see a complete DevSecOps uh, demo. Uh, really, congratulations, Roberto and Rodrigo. That, that is awesome. And actually, I know there's a repository. If people want to... Um, yeah, sure. I can to... show yeah. the repository as well. I think um, if, if it's uh, the one, the DevSecOps demo one, the one you shared with me. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's the same. Yeah. All you have right. one. So time is, time is fly. So I was, I was expecting to have time to show how to deploy ACS on CRC, for example. Uh, yeah, nice. There are some it's some awesome. tweaks that you can do with a uh, resource that basically you can have ACS running on your laptop using CRC. But oh, that's maybe super next time. Interesting. Let, let's do this. Yeah. It was so interesting that I think it deserves a series, a DevSecOps series. We can have some kind of. We, we did this introduction. For the next time, we're gonna do a series where we go into CRC or local development with ACS. And mm -hmm. I would like to see also the penetration testing, um, the vulnerability assessment. We, we have seen the wall pipeline today. Maybe we can focus more on the vulnerability assessment of live uh, violation. Like uh, I have my application running. Uh, this mm -hmm. application is doing a live uh, violation. So we have seen the CI part. Uh, yeah. What is And uh, we talked about the CD part with the Argo. Mm -hmm. I, I was wondering if we have something to say also on, uh, you know, running processes. Yeah, we, we can yes, do of course. a lot of things with the running and, and detecting also the violations, for, for example, preventing if anything uh, goes or, or if anybody mm, do a net card or an end map inside of our container, prevent to do that and itself uh, also uh, kill uh, the port if mm, this uh, will enforce it or not. So we can have this uh, this series for sure. Yeah, Fantastic. of course. 
I'm looking forward to it because uh, it's so interesting. I think people really enjoyed also in the chat. There was lots of uh, interaction. I just uh, shared the demo. Uh, so the demo was made by uh, Roberto Rodrigo that worked in this fantastic uh, demo. I, I really recommend to try it out. You know what? You can try on uh, CRC, for instance, which is the a local development for OpenShift. And you can try on any of all your OpenShift cluster available that I'm putting in the chat, the link to, you know, start trying OpenShift, start trying ACS, uh, which is now GA. Uh, and you can deploy the demo that uh, uh, Roberto Rodrigo today made uh, for us. So, you know, for, uh, I would like to really thank you for this awesome demo. Um, recording will be uh, available on the OpenShift uh, uh, YouTube channel. And um, you know what? We will uh, see uh, again here at OpenShift Coffee Break with, uh, with a new DevSecOps series because it's so cool, so interesting. I really enjoy it. So thanks, uh, Roberto and Rodrigo, for joining Most us welcome. today. My pleasure. And, uh, see you next time. See you next time. And uh, for see us, nice. folks, uh, let's, uh, you can stay today on OpenShift TV. We, we have our regular schedule if you would like to stay. Uh, that, that goes into uh, uh, from uh, from uh, you know EMEA afternoon time, and then it goes into the normal schedule. Schedule. If you go to OpenShift TV, you you see all the um, all the schedule that that we have. Let me put the link so you can follow with next things. Uh, today we have lots of uh, also episode uh, we, we, our recurring series. And uh, we see each other uh, for our next appointment. That will be uh, July the 28th. We will come back with a pipeline as a code topic together with Jafar and some people from the engineering talking about uh, Tecton pipelines uh, as a code. So uh, thank you very much for joining today. Thank you for attending. Uh, look forward to see you on the next uh, OpenShift Coffee Break episode. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Bye-bye.